Today on Dave's Tech Table, we're going to take a quick look at what's new in the CS4 updates. These updates include Premiere Pro and Encore 401, After Effects 901, and the new Adobe Media Encoder. Premiere even has new features like Final Cut Import, OMF Export, and Enhanced AAF support. One feature of CS4 you may not have known, and that's for Windows Vista 64 and Mac Leopard users. You can now address more application memory for programs like Premiere Pro and After Effects. Premiere Pro and After Effects CS4 are still 32-bit application, but one of the best features about the 64-bit applications is we can now address more memory. For example, we've broken Premiere Pro up into multiple 32-bit executables, meaning that each one of these executables can address up to 3.6 gigs of RAM. After Effects users with lots of cores, say 8 cores, can actually address 3.6 gigs of RAM per core. So the more cores you have, the more application RAM you can have available to After Effects. Let's take a look at one of the new features in Premiere Pro 401, and that's Premiere Pro's new Final Cut importer. Yes, it now means that Windows users can even read Apple Final Cut XML projects. Let's jump into Premiere Pro and take a look. Let's jump right into Final Cut and take a look at the project I've already created. For this quick example, I've got seven clips on the timeline, along with a lower third title, some cross-dissolved transitions, and I also have a picture-in-picture -picture with some motion, as you see here. As usual, for exporting Final Cut projects for other applications, you use the Apple XML interchange format. And I'll export that to the desktop. From here, I'll just go ahead and quit Final Cut and jump right into Premiere. I'll just go ahead and click on New Project and stick this on the desktop as well. From here, you can go ahead and create a custom sequence if you want to, but really the work there is already done for you. So I'm going to go ahead and call this FCP Import for my sequence and go ahead and import that project in. So here's the project on the desktop. Once you start the import process, it's going to ask you where the movies are located. Go ahead and point it to the right folder. I've got a ProRes folder set up with all my clips in there. As you see here, it creates a folder with all the necessary components. Right here is my lower third title, so if I double click on that, I can see if there's any adjustments that I need to make. It comes right up in the Adobe Titler. Uh, sometimes there is a font mismatch, so just depending on what you've used in Final Cut, we'll see whether or not it maps over to uh, Premiere Pro. If not, here's an opportunity to fix it. I have seen instances where the size does not come in correctly either, so sometimes you do need to make an adjustment. But again, just double click on it and double check it. The sequence is already created for you as well, so if you just double click on it, you'll notice it comes right up in Premiere Pro. So here's my lower third. Here's all of my transitions. And as you see here, I've got my picture in picture with motion. And if I take a look at the effects controls panel, flip open the Adobe Motion, you'll see that all of the keyframing from Final Cut was matched over inside of Premiere Pro. a really nice way to start to work with Final Cut projects trying to bring them into Production Premium. What can I do from here? Well, you've got lots of choices. You can actually take this particular timeline, make some adjustments if you want to. You can file export to Dynamic Link, send it over to Encore to make a Blu-ray disc or maybe a Flash website. You can also select all of the clips on the timeline and of course send it over to After Effects so we can replace with After Effects composition and start to do some of our After Effects work as well. Let me go ahead and just bring After Effects forward. It's wanting me to go ahead and name the After Effects file so I'll say go ahead and save. And as you see here it brings in all of the imported Final Cut files and you see all of the layers including the picture-in-picture -picture with the After Effects motion mapped to that. So a very, very nice way to work with Final Cut files inside of After Effects. 
For the Final Cut users out there editing in Final Cut, looking to take advantage of the various pieces within the production premium, just consider Premiere Pro as more of a traffic cop to send pieces and parts wherever you need them to go, whether it's out to Blu-ray or over to After Effects or maybe some sound retouching inside of Sound Booth or any of the other applications. And again, you can always go back to Premiere Pro to get full access to those individual clips. Let's jump back in Premiere Pro and I'll point out two other quick things for you in the 401 update. One of the new things we've added is file export to OMF. You've got a few options on how these files are rendered, whether they're complete audio files that are copied or trimmed audio files. And lastly, we've got new enhanced AAF support. And that's a quick look at what's new in Premiere Pro 401.